How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Manchado Visuals and today I'd like to go over exposing S-Log using exposure indexes. Sony cameras like the FS7 and FX9 use what's called an exposure index in Cine EI mode and treats exposure a little more like film. Now there are all kinds of methods of exposing S-Log such as exposing to the right or simply eyeing it, but I'm generally not a fan of either because they're almost impossible to quantify. The reason exposure indexes work really well is because you'll know exactly how they will affect dynamic range. When using Cine EI, the camera will always record at its native ISO. So whenever you change your ISO value, the only change you see in exposure is only coming from the monitor LUT. Using a lower EI is essentially tricking you into overexposing the image so that when you get into your grading suite, when you bring the image back down to normal exposure, you also reduce the noise floor, resulting in a much cleaner image. This leads to increased depth in the shadows if you're using a lower EI or expanded highlights if you're using a higher EI. For example, here's an image shot at a native ISO of 800. Now, the FX9 already has a pretty impressive noise performance at native ISO and is already far cleaner than the FS7's base ISO. Now, here's the same image, but rated at an exposure index of 400 EI. Remember that the camera is still recording at a native ISO of 800, but the monitor LUT is showing an image that's one stop darker, making it appear as if the image is underexposed. This is what the actual recording looks like, and this is what it looks like after it's been brought back to normal exposure. When you look at 800 and 400 EI side by side, you can see that a one-stop difference goes a long way in cleaning up the image and pushing down your noise floor. Going even further, here's an example shot at 200 EI, or two stops overexposed. At this point, noise is practically non-existent, blacks are straight up black, and the image is exceptionally clean. Now YouTube doesn't have the best compression algorithm, especially when it comes to shadow information, so I definitely recommend viewing this on Vimeo. Link is in the description. One important thing to note is that there's never free lunch, so whenever you dig deeper into your shadows dynamic range, you do this at the expense of your highlights. At native ISO, S-Log3 gives around 6 stops of highlight detail and 8 stops of shadow detail. Using an exposure index of 400 loses 1 stop of highlight information, while 200 EI loses 2 stops of highlight information. This is traditionally how ISO works, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Normally, if your image is too bright and you want to darken the image, you would normally lower your ISO, but that just redistributes where middle gray lies, reducing your highlight latitude. Conversely, if your image is too dark, you would normally raise your ISO to increase exposure, but this just crushes your shadow detail, which is why you also see an increase in noise. One of the best examples of this is shown in the Blackmagic Pocket cameras. In the manual, Blackmagic shows how ISO affects dynamic range. The lower the ISO, the more dynamic range you'll have in the shadows, while the higher the ISO, the more highlight information you'll have. At the end of the day, a lot of it comes down to latitude. This is obviously much easier to do on cameras with a higher bit depth, although it can be done on smaller alpha cameras. A lot of people complain about 8-bit cameras not having enough latitude when shooting S-Log, but I've done this plenty of times on mirrorless bodies. I found that shooting one stop over is a great sweet spot in retaining enough highlights while also producing a clean image. Granted, it doesn't leave you with a lot of room for pushing and pulling in post, but it definitely can be done, especially when recorded with an Atomos recorder. I always recommend going down in exposure index from your base ISO. The only time I would use a higher exposure index is if I'm trying to maximize highlights and don't have a lot of shadows in the scene. If I've made this too confusing, Sony has a bunch of great material on exposure indexes featuring Alistair Chapman, who can probably explain it much better than I can. I'll leave some references down in the description. Now, if you need help with exposing S-Log, be sure to buy my cinematic LUT pack. Just kidding, I'll never sell a LUT pack. Hopefully, this video is helpful in some way. If you're using an FS7 or FX9 for the first time for a job, this info is an absolute must. I've heard of some horror stories of people that didn't know how to use CineEI and botched their entire project because of it. It's also super helpful to let the editor know how you've actually rated the camera, whether it be one or two stops over. Otherwise, they'll think you're just handing off a bunch of overexposed footage. On the FS7, there's actually an option to bake in the exposure index to alleviate any confusion, but I haven't yet seen this option on the FX9. If you have any further questions on this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.